So this is part two of the dovetail cutter and dovetail build. The audio quality was remarkably bad uh, just recording this live. So I'm, I'm doing a voiceover after the fact. Now, what I did have some trouble with is after polishing out some tool marks, the shank of the cutter was about one thousandth undersize, which is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. It still held well enough to finish the job. I had a little more run out than I would like, so I was forced to take lighter cuts. Now you can see here I'm using a carbide end mill um, with the tool itself being held in my dividing head. I wound up cutting this four flutes. Uh, the original plan was two, but I think that the web wasn't going to be quite strong enough. The web of the tool being the center section. So, you know, I did this in a couple of passes to get on center, marked the digital readout uh, on the, the mill, the, you know, set where to stop. I locked the gib so I could not travel on the Y as I wanted to be the same equidistant across all of the flutes. And I did all my cutting in the X axis, as you can see here. This works fairly well. But what you are forced to do, and you will see later, is that I had to hand file the relief. As I do not have a tool and cutter grinder, and my surface grinder is pretty inadequate for that job, I hand filed it. And the reason this became a left-handed cutter is, as a right-handed person, it was just slightly easier the way I held it in the vise to file it that way. So that that's just why that happened. And, you know... It worked all right. It, spoilers is the part is, as of this time of recording, completely finished. I'm just chewing through the editing and uploading this piecemeal. I don't want to do too much content dumping on one topic at once. I think that does get a little bit boring, especially for regular viewers. Uh, if you follow Ian McCollum of Forgotten Weapons, he learned that with French rifles. And you can see here, I'm just taking the cutter out and inspecting it. And you can see the cross section as I'm, I'm pointing to there where it, it's basically just like a Bauer Krauts or Iron Cross. Now, it you'll have to hand file to complete the, the clearance required. So here we are at a good comfortable height. Um, not a really, this is not an easy operation to film, but basically what I'm doing I'm going to file a little bit. Of aggressive cut. Into one tooth. And I'm going to file some clearance. Into the other going to go around and do this little by little. It's not going to be even on all the teeth, but it's going to be even enough. Cutting. It's worn out. I mean, it would be a good idea to make sure that the trailing edge doesn't rub. Um, I'm almost thinking that that's going to be faster to do on a bench grinder. I, 
I know we're gonna get away with this because I'm cutting glass, I'm not cutting steel. Even aluminum um, can be... fussier than grass. I think what's more important is filing relief than filing some positive rate. Now this round hand filing there's almost no good way to hold on to this and be able to file it. thinking because this is going to cut brass, I might not go through the trouble of surface grinding it to sharpen the teeth. I may just stone them. I think this is going to work. So that's your cutter profile. We'll find out in a little bit. I think I'm just gonna stick something on the mill and take a test cut and see what happens. So this is really as simple as it gets for hardening. I'm gonna use an oxy fuel torch. Um, in an ideal world, what would work really well actually is have this spinning while you heated it. So that way you could get more even heat. I just constantly move the part. And what I'm going to actually heat this up red hot and quench it twice. Because I know I induce some stress machining. And it's, it's a thermal cycling process. So you want to hold it at that critical temperature for a little bit. That really does help your hardenability and toughness. So I'm not even quenching in regular heat treat oil. I think this is just hydraulic oil. Now on the second pass, I'm a lot more careful to really hold it at temperature. Just hold it there for a little bit. Even, you know, 30 seconds makes a massive difference. Don't get any oil, turn the gas off to your torch so you don't burn the shop down. And now we should have a nice, hard, heat-treated part that we just dropped in the oil. I am going to get a nice pair of pliers, fish that out, temper it, and then I'll show you guys what's going on. So this is the end of part two. Uh, we got the cutter hard. Uh, and also, just an explanation, I, I like to have the oxyacetylene torch very, very rich for this because I'm... 
I kind of get a softer heat with the brazing tip. I don't have another brazing tip. I just have cutting tips, which don't work as well for this. So the softer flame spreads the heat. You don't get as many hot spots. You reduce your warping. So right after this, the cutter went in the kitchen uh, toaster oven for tempering, which doesn't go over well with roommates, but they will survive. So in the next couple of days after this, I should have part three live. So thanks for watching, guys.